All right. I think that does it. Oh, well, uh, one other thing I should take a look at. Cheat codes I want to have active, which will just be fixing the melee bug, and I think having more random encounters, which uh, I think is going to be more bad than good for us. So, uh, I'm going to use a Game Genie code to fix the melee bug in the game so that we can melee it up with wire reflexes fine, just fine. And I'm going to use one for more random encounters. Instead of no random encounters. Why not have more random encounters? Yeah, more, more opportunities to be killed by hellhounds. And Let's try this walk faster thing. Let's see how well that works. We might have to turn that back off, but... Gang's gone pro, that's right. Okay, start new options. Uh, Samurai is going to be the most annoying one to start as. So let's do that. Am I going to... I'm either the decker or I'm going to have someone else do my decking. Who am I going to have do my decking if I'm not going to do it? Is it going to be Phantom? It's gonna be Phantom again, isn't it? Ah, oh, son of a bitch. <laughs> you know what, I'm gonna punt this. <laughs> I'm gonna have you people decide. <laughs> Let me go ahead and make a new poll. That's right, I'm going to absolve myself of the responsibility of this fucking decision. One, two, three. One is Samurai, two is Decker, three is Gator Shaman. Samurai, Decker, Gator Shaman. Samurai, Decker, Gator Shaman. Are we going to be Hail Gatoring this run? Looks like we're going to be Hail Gatoring this run. Hey there, Jack. Damn it, I'm almost out of tea in this glass already. Should have grabbed the bigger glass. For the past few years, I've liked to put my glasses in freezers so that they're chilled. Um, because for such a long time, all the way back to when I was a teen, really, I discovered that I didn't really like ice in my cups. And me just putting glasses in freezers ended up becoming a natural extension of making myself happy in my adult life. I don't care for ice. My gums are sensitive. I like it every now and then. But uh, they can be drinks can be overloaded, and then you get watered down, ends up being tragic. All right, that looks like a pretty solid plurality right there. That's a majority, even. So be it. So I put my hands up. I don't have that emote on Twitch, do I? The Hail Gator emote? No. Damn. What's wrong with me? Why did I put Max McMahon there instead of Joshua? Not even Gunderson's on there. The fucking super rad ghost? Why do I hate myself? <laughs> All these questions and more will be tackled today. January 31st, 2058. You guys will have to let me know uh, sound balance as we get into some actual music. And I don't know, like, cutscene music as opposed to, like, you know, Redmond Barrett's music, so we'll play it by ear. No, Michael! 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 Wait, whose cyber eyes were recording that third-person view of... It doesn't matter. Let's not think about it. Yeah, neck and shoulders don't feel too bad after that headbanging we did earlier. Oh my god, <laughs> that was fast. <laughs> the battered sign reads, Hey there, Cloak. Stoker's Coffin Motel. Motels like these are cheap. Each room only large enough to fit a small bed. Dumps like these tend to detract the dregs of humanity. Manager yawns. 
I won't bore you with the welcome speech, so what do you want? I'm here to pick up Michael's stuff. You're Michael's brother, huh? Your bro skipped on paying his bill, and I'm holding this stuff till I get the back rent. Let's make a deal. You pay up the 250 he owes, and I'll fork over his stash. <laughs> How much could he have stored in one of those rooms? Hey, if you need Nguyen, head up the street to the jump house. Gunderson is always looking for runners. You'll find him in a booth towards the back of the bar. Let's see the... Oh my God. <laughs> I have to turn this off. <laughs> That's too fast. <laughs> it's funny, though. We can get so many Gunderson runs done at this speed. <laughs> can walk off the fucking screen. This is great. Your first event? Yeah, I'll, I'll totally help you. Thanks for my 50 new yen. My old friend, Gunderson, the Gundy Boys. Shiawasi nuke plant to the Halloweeners? That's an easy 50 new yen. I don't know, Serpent Stare. I don't think so. But there's only one way to be sure. Like, this civilian here is walking at the same speed, so... I think... Well, here's your example. <laughs> I have to turn this off. We'll, we'll have fun with it until we dunk on this guy, <laughs> and then I'll turn it off. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Gonna miss that. Does that immediately take effect, or I'm gonna have to save and load? I'm gonna have to save and load. I can do that. Just go ahead and do a hard reset of the game. Speed through this opening. I know, we'd be able to outrun Hellhounds. That'd be pretty sweet. But yeah, we had to turn that off. Oh, God, it's so terrible. <laughs> oh, it's like being on an interstate and going, you know, 80 miles per hour and then getting off on like a rural road and hopping down to 50. Or God forbid, like a, a city zone area going like 35. This is the worst. <laughs> no! <laughs> Fucking school zone. On the bright side, you folks did pick a gator shaman for me, which is not a samurai, which uh, is so slow that out getting enough distance from enemies to attack them is impossible without upping quickness. I shouldn't say impossible. You really have to cheese like the corners and the Redmond Barons. Hey there, O'Toole. I wasn't expecting another group of Halloweeners, but uh, I did have the more encounters code on, so I think that's making itself apparent. That's right, Hail Gator, everyone. Happy Gator. More satisfied customers. Oh my god! We're never gonna fucking... <laughs> I'm gonna have to sell shit in my inventory to get the 250. <laughs> Howdy. 
Uh, Gator Shaman also starts with a decent amount of uh, negotiation, too. Which, uh... I think it's three is when it actually starts making an impact on the run. Zero through two doesn't have any, like, impact. Low prices, so it's good. It was, like, Jump House to Hollywood? Take it, I don't want to be responsible for it no more. I hear ya. I hear ya. Take care, Cloak. And you too, O'Toole. Thanks for all the years of laughs and good times. Laughs. Good times. Alright. Let's just run away from that encounter. I don't know whether I'm gonna play long enough to finish this in one sitting. I think, uh, in a few hours we'll spin the poll back up and see whether folks want to keep keep having me play this mouth. game or, uh, swap to something else. I've certainly proven in several instances that I can finish this game in one sitting. Of course, it's a greenhouse. Rat's nest? Yeah, we can do that. <laughs> if they've been that long, O'Toole, would you still classify them as naps? That sounds like outright sleep. I mean, I don't want to be the nap police here. You know, some sort of sleep bureaucrat. Again. <laughs> At least it hasn't been the group of three weenies, and one of them has the gun. Yet. Yeah. Hey, you need to slow the fuck down, buddy. Woo, medkit. We can sell that for a quick buck. Oh. No cover, there's that, uh... There's that game that came out recently that's... Like, a bizarre-looking motherfucker that has you being, like, the dream police, right? I forget the name of it. Saw a little bit of that gameplay. Maybe, like, an hour or so. Didn't really appeal to me. No, it takes place through, like, the... It basically looks like how the... Like, a parody of the 90s internet. Hypnoscape, Hypnosphere, Dreamscape, something or another. Yeah. Whatever. Probably should have checked to see how many uses that had. Oh well. Let's sell this little shitty gun while we're at it. It's a rant's nest, right? Yeah. Good. Do 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 hypnospace. No, son of a bitch. Really? Really? <sighs> really? Come on, man. For fuck's sakes. Hypnospace outlaws, there you go. I can't go into the fucking building. I think there was a Game Genie code someone made to allow me to go into buildings, regardless of me being in a combat encounter. Might have to consider that. Who for thought? He's calling for help? <laughs> yes, of course. Why didn't I see that? You know, give me one moment, Weenie. Oh yeah, if if I actually go into the the Wargarble wilderness, we're fucked. <laughs> we're pretty fucked. Could be tragic. Why don't we do this, and then we'll just shrink this down so that it's a larger resolution, but shrunk down so that it actually still fills that space. So that there's not just like a void there. It was kind of upsetting me. There we go. 
All right, you. Let's walk you out. Here. Here, there you go. You did it. Fucking Hail Gator. Great. We actually stood there so long the music looped. Now, when you're locked into a combat encounter, other other encounters do not join. I'm not used to seeing this many civilians logging around either. Interesting. Uh, Servant Sir, that is specific to me uh, obliterating them with uh, magic, yeah. They would leave behind corpses if I uh, just shot them to death or meleeed them. But I'm taking mana and effectively reducing their bodies to ash. Taking my fucking picture. Uh, the amount of crazy shit you can see from those events is sharply reduced until, uh, you pass through the little tutorial bit. You know, as you get later on in the game, you can be ambushed by even more shit. <sighs> fucking rat's nest. This fucking wall. They don't have to be there. Come on. Just we can just will them out of existence. Almost. Do it, do it, do it, do it. Ah oh, Fine. Come on. We might have to turn this off. <laughs> what are you talking about? Man is always free. The price you pay for casting spells in Shadowrun is, uh, not in a mana pool. The spell is just uh, too low powered for it to have like any drain impact. Howdy. <laughs> Fuck you too. Well, at least we got paid fifty million for that. If one more encounter had appeared there, I would have immediately turned off the damn more random encounters. Like, that spawn rate's a bit too high. Yeah, I'm kinda awesome. <laughs> Community of ghouls, that's not kinda awesome. Still not awesome. Offering me 20 million uh, less per kill. Not helpful. That's right. Half man, half beard, half pig in the most impossible way possible. Man, beard, pig. These mist covered mountains are all left for me. But my home is the lowlands and always will be. Wouldn't be so bad if we had higher quickness. We don't. Someday you'll return to your 
badly than your farms. Does armor spell help? It's better to not get hit. I don't have a direct answer for you into how much it actually makes a difference. That's my answer to that question. I don't have an answer. I also would have to do some finagling to cast that without drain, which means it would consume one of my fetishes over there. I do start with ten, but afterwards I would take that drain on the chin. Result in, uh, well, damage. Speaking of damage, I did take some mental damage there from getting slugged that one time. And to keep that in mind, that does have an impact on your spellcasting. Might, uh, rest up at the end. Raise my quickness. Be easier to get out of, uh, nefarious situations. Probably end up raising something else, too. My charisma, I guess. That'd be all I have the points for. I know, uh, Joshua looks pretty good. Yeah? Yeah, it's the trauma I've taken. Tell you what, why don't we do one more run? Speaking of run... <laughs> That was the group of three, which has the guy with the gun, which is the guy we need to run from. Uh, because, uh... Shut him up. Shut him up. I'm now softlocked. I can't cartridge save in here, because you can't save indoors. I can't get outdoors, because it's too close to the enemy that spawned off-screen. Will I be able to try and attack this enemy off-screen? No, because it's fucking off-screen. Why would you be able to do that? I've never had this happen before, but I've also... No never used this code before for more random encounters, so it's gonna be a hard turn this off. I tried, everyone, to spice up our gameplay. We could have had Hellhounds out the wazoo, fucking Windigo and Bandersnatch, and I would have been dead a million times over, but I can't have this happen to me. I tried. I tried. Let it be said. I put forth an effort. Yeah, I... You know, I might be able to... There might be a way I can get out of this. But I'm gonna have to lose all my fetishes to do it. No. I don't think I can KO myself past 10% mental health. I'm glad I'm now having this epiphany after I tried to do this. Well, it was a good faith effort, everyone. Oh, looks like I'm, uh, I'm loading. It was a cartridge save I made. Damn it. <laughs> Alright. 
go ahead and turn off the more random. Because that was too random for us. But we're going to turn Walk Faster back on, damn it. <laughs> for a little bit. Hard reset. Reboot it. I gotta do these runs quicker now, so we gotta make up for lost time, guys, because of the soft lock. Wink. It shouldn't take long, though. I'm definitely going to have less money. That's okay. So where were we? We were run one run in instead of eight runs in, so we lost out on seven runs of progress. Sold like a med kit. We'll make up for lost time, everyone. Oh, this feels so good to do this. <laughs> I'd be tickled if everything moved this fast, though. It doesn't. Uh, we proved that, but uh, we could have everything else move this fast. Like, you wouldn't be able to escape from Hellhounds anyway, but, like, just escaping from, like, other critters? But if everything, including you, moved that fast, it would just be disorienting as fuck. It'd be pretty entertaining, actually. Anyway. Making up for lost time. Making up for lost time. It's so nice when an encounter doesn't spawn on the other side of the fucking wall. Makes it easier to do things. Oops, sorry. Jackal's Lantern? It was. When I got soft locked, I had 855 new yen. So fucking broken. This reality. It was the med kit I sold, and I sold my gun to. And a few other things. Like picking up new yen off the people I killed. It's so empty by comparison now that I'm just not having, like, Halloweenies, like, vomiting out of every orifice in this game. <laughs> That was like some old school, like, JRPG bullshit, like, encounter raids. But it made Seattle feel more vibrant and alive. Some, some danger there. <laughs> hey. Listen, we didn't have a problem. Ah, fuck it. I'm not gonna bother fighting those guys. We don't have to. We didn't have a problem until the encounter spawned inside the jump house. Off screen. Up until that point, everything had been great. <laughs> a little tedious, but great. The other thing that this code does is that it doesn't slow you down when you get in the combat encounters, so... Just, uh... That's just too damn funny. What do we got now? Four, five, six. Hmm. Alright, we'll do a few more runs and then we'll, uh, turn the speed back off. I just wanted to make up for the progress uh, that was lost after the soft lock. Shut and lock. Chili pay, but this runs fucking next door. It was so easy to travel around the Redmond Barrens, I don't understand why more people aren't doing these runs. How isn't Gunderson the richest of Johnsons? Maybe he is, or maybe... Like, you know, the title Mr. Johnson's always interchangeable, right? So, like, Gunderson's, like... Like, he might have, like, a dynasty, too. So, like, this Gunderson is 37th in a long line of Gundersons <laughs> who come here offering these milk runs. Everyone gets rich quick.
Damn. <laughs> That's the disadvantage of the super speed right there. You end up driving into a combat situation. Like, oops. <laughs> Those guys have been more dangerous, you know? That would have been tragic. Just like driving like one of those mages that just nukes you. Dead. Oh, hey! Here's the combat! Alright! In truth, I may have just been outrun, like outdistancing some of the combat encounters before, like, I got into them. Shut them out. I don't think this extra speed would be much of an advantage in a ghoul house, though. I'm gonna say no to that. Shut them out. Pretty solid 60. Uh, one or two more runs. We'll turn it off. And go back to fucking school zone speed limits. It's gonna suck. It's gonna suck. Last one. You know, if you'd offered me 40 or 45 there, I, uh, I might have considered it. Shut him up. Damn, you got me. <laughs> All right. Damn. Go ahead and save the game. Doing it with this cruddy armor, too. I don't know what to tell you, Slagfire. Other than surprise, I do have an anime mask that hangs on my closet door and watches me while I sleep. That was for the anime uh, week broadcasting that I did a couple years back. And I'm going to go ahead and refresh my drink. When I come back, we're going to goof around with these fucking ghouls. At super speed, take a little bit of time. But, well, I'm gonna get rich and die trying. And then we'll turn off the code and then. Be back at fucking baby speeds and then. Bad days will be here forever. Trust me. Uh, I don't know how you mean by less stiff. So I don't know how to answer that question. <laughs> Probably an indirect fix to that, though, would be to increase your speed. Since that influences your attack rate. And so, uh, no, you can be able to get, make more attacks. Yeah, that is a comfy bed. I do like it. Probably my favorite possession. 
Big fan of that bed. Right. I'm going to hell. Fighting the ghoul house with this kind of speed is gonna be fucking weird. <laughs> but, we're gonna try. And if you had more random encounters on at the ghoul house, you'd never be able to fucking leave it. Yes. On the flip side, if you had random encounters turned off, you pr probably, like, wouldn't have any encounters at all in a ghoul house, so... That wouldn't be great. Vampires take a while. Mana Zap is a very weak spell. Huh. I don't have that problem. Uh, Slight Fire, if you, like, in the Unity settings, um, or maybe even, like, in the actual, like, settings in-game, uh, there might be a way to adjust, like, mount, mount sensitivity on that front. So that you don't have to move your mouse uh, so far. You know what? Because I'm in that sort of mood, and let's actually launch Daggerfall Unity right now. Daggerfall Unity. Have a look. Advanced. Gameplay, yeah. So in controls. Go ahead and capture. I can just pull up my Daggerfall window. Maybe? Yes. So, in gameplay, there is a weapon sensitivity control here. Sensitivity of weapon swings the mouse movements. Take it easy, Jack. I never bothered, like, adjusting that. And then, like, a weapon attack threshold here, which apparently is a bit of a mouse gesture travel distance for an attack. So that's probably your issue. Loud music from that out of the way. Let's go back to this. I lost count of how many uh, that was. Four or five. I was distracted. It is what it is. We'll say now that I have... Uh, that's seven, and then this will be eight. You can get paid for up to twenty. And it could be a decent haul of cash, especially if you can get uh, the Johnson to offer you triple digits. <laughs> that would be example of the super fast speeds fucking me over there. Find the giant scorpions, huh? Not the easiest enemy, but if you do have immunity to paralysis, uh, not too bad. Uh, something folks uh, getting into Daggerfall, um, and this goes for, like, those older, ruthless dungeon crawler games from the 90s, which I do consider Daggerfall to be in that spirit, um... Uh, Having a character who's effective at combat is really fucking important. And, uh, you'll have some survivability issues at the beginning. Privateer's Hold is a great teacher of that. You know, of just fucking, like, landing there and... And even if you do know how to get out... You just die in there so many times. Well, it's probably an exaggeration. Once you know how to get out of there, it's... 
you'd have to move slow or basically just like take your time actually fighting things instead of just fleeing. Alright. We solved the problem. <laughs> Happy hunting. <laughs> We'll do one more little group, and then we'll leave. Then we'll turn off our super walking speed. We'll go back to following the speed limit. Oh, it'll be so sad. Wow, I actually didn't get a... I actually didn't hurt me there. These vampires would be much tougher uh, if I had to adhere to the speed limit. They can be difficult to outrun, even with high quickness. As it turns out, being a vampire gives you that supernatural agility. <laughs> that, uh... Oh, son of a bitch. It's one of the things I hate about these fucking ghoul houses. A damn encounter spawned on the other side of a fucking wall, and I can't leave... Even though those enemies stand no chance of being able to get to me unless I go all the way around there. It's deeply upsetting. Alright. They wandered away. The fools they were. Permitting my escape. <laughs> Damn, I hit the terminal instead of the jump house door. I was close. Shut them out. My fifty-five. Shut and lock. It's a pretty good haul. Though I do believe that means I killed eighteen instead of twenty. I guess I should have gone back for that final two. That was only nine hundred bucks, and I was getting paid fifty per. Oh well, it'll be fine. Okay. Right, right, right. I can only save these damn save limitations. Let's come out here and save. Save over this slot. Let me turn it off. We'll just we'll just roll only with the uh, the melee fix. Yes, 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 yes. Anyway, we have more than enough cash at this point to uh, slot this cred stick and be gone, so we might as well remove the tutorial shackles from us. Also, might as well just sell the fucking gun. This piece of junk. There we go. I want to buy an armor jacket? Armor jacket's pretty good. Question to myself, really. What are you going to do with this gameplay? Like, where are you going to go? Like, once you're able to leave the Revenant Barons, you want to save up for the Orc Armband? Do you want to get Phantom and do Matrix runs? Just want to do Gunderson runs? Would you like to do courier runs and other sorts of bric a brac across Seattle? Want to do some main quest stuff? Hmm. Magic would be pretty nice, yeah. Could get some more magic. It's fairly pricey. I don't want to pursue getting one of the discounts uh, from one of the discount people. I could do that. That means I'd have to fucking talk to Trent. That son of a bitch. Yeah, this is gonna make enough of a difference that I'm willing to pay the premium. That's a big deal. Of course, me rolling at full offense posture isn't exactly helping my defense dice, but 
I gotta, I gotta make things happen with the shooting man is out spell. Howdy, I'm here to pick up Michael's stuff. Small change, slot this cred, and I'm gone. Creds roll off your stick and in return you are handed a crumpled plastic box, hoping to get you find a scented letter, a cyber dagger, wristband, and two hollow picks. The letter addressed to Michael reads as follows. M, I don't trust her, Johnson, and neither should you. His story just doesn't wash, and you know it. I'm out on this one, and I hope you are too. I'll wait for you at the Terrace Lar City Inn in Puyallup Barrens. Or as I like to call them, the Wargarble Barons. The cyber deck is a small legion's alpha that hasn't seen much use. These decks are fine to dabble in cyberspace, but lack real power. First band is a dog wagon homing beacon. When its wearer's condition becomes critical, a dog wagon trauma team is dispatched to retrieve him. Wears him resuscitated and dropped off at Seattle General Hospital uh, with a fee attached. Um, in the tutorial section, before you recover this box, this little plastic package, um... Should you go down, uh, you will wake up at the Little Chiba Chop Shop, missing part of your cash. In this particular scenario, you will get delivered to downtown Seattle. Uh, this dog wagon bracelet works everywhere. Pretty neat. <laughs> um, it's not how it actually works in Shadowrun lore, but uh, in the video game if I had. Which means, why the hell didn't Michael take it with him, you know? If it would have worked everywhere. We got some hollow picks. Doc. And, uh... Mr. Caleb Brightmore, Esquire. Problem solved. Worries eliminated. Yeah, Michael, uh... Made some questionable choices. And then, uh... We spent 250 to make 500. Pretty good. It's pretty good. It does. For like the super platinum whatever fucking service that uh whatever the hell like this particular doc wagon contract is i don't know maybe he got it as a reward for something for completing a run though his normal johnson was more than a reed so take that for what it's worth Am I going to get any cyberware? Likely not. Because I... Because the viewers voted for me to play the Gator Shaman. Alright. Thinking about exactly what I want to up and in what order. And who I'm going to be recruiting onto the team. Phantom Stark? Artbane Stark? Winston? Ricky? I have no interest in a shaman party. I have, uh, I have ranted. God save me. There. <laughs> There was one particular stream I cursed Trent so hard. I was so pissed at him. <laughs> so fucking mad. I'm like, why are you punching people? Cast your fucking spell. <laughs> so my attitude towards uh, having uh, AI controlled spell casters in the party is a, uh... no. I can tolerate one. Uh, but having more than that is just... Uh, <laughs> that's what I just thought was a physical attempt. <laughs> I, I can't say I cursed out Trent harder than I cursed out... I've cursed out Phantom over all the years, but ever since then I've basically been like, Fuck you, Trent. <laughs> Never again. Hmm. Bad. Okay, so I think uh, a typical for me, I will up instead of intelligence and willpower, which would actually help with combat, uh, what I'm going to do is up charisma, which will reduce the hiring price of Shadowrunners 
why you could just get more money? That's a good question. Why? Just give more money. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I will up probably quickness, intelligence. That'll leave me with four points. That's five, four, nine. Even with four more. I do willpower instead, and then body. I'm gonna go uh, assemble a team, though. If I'm gonna do more of these uh, little Gunderson runs, I'm gonna go ahead and. Uh... Hey there, Jimone. Let's go ahead and uh, get some people together. I could have done this sooner, but, you know, it happens. Yeah, shotguns. They're, uh, they're fairly powerful. Obviously can't be silenced. A real tragedy, I know. I definitely want that quickness. I do want that intelligence, and I'm left with four more. As I talked about... Which we'll go ahead and put into body. Saving with one. Okay. Let's run through all the people I don't want to recruit. Ricky. Trent. Walking Bear. Freya. Basically, the casters. Eileen Toothis? Takes too long to get her. Winston? Stark? I can do that one fairly easy. And then one of the Deckers? Either Peter, Rihanna, Phantom. Peter is just trash. Really. Might as well just to start it as a Decker. Phantom or Rihanna would work. <laughs> you know, from like a mechanics aspect, like, dwarves uh, have that quickness hit, which makes, which does hamper them a bit in cyberspace. And he also, he's just like the worst of the three NPC deckers, so... Just like hiring him is just... You really have to spend like a lot of effort developing him. You vote for a woman. Well... Let me pay a few business people. I'm I'm willing to shell out the cash. Let's go say hi to some folks. <laughs> it's not even it's a party of one. <laughs> the Joshua party. Ah, it's a problem. It didn't take long uh, before I left. <laughs> Rendon Barons. Gang's going pro? You doubt it. Didn't take long at all. Anyway, here's the Terrace Lar City Inn. Uh, we are here to see uh, Michael's former squeeze? Girlfriend? Tabitha Shale, who uh, has not come out of her room for days. Manager connects you to her room via the vid phone. Uh, Tabitha is pretty... pretty scared. And we're here to have a conversation with her. We are Michael's brother. We're here to avenge our fallen familial death. As the shell opens the doors, you arrive. She looks as if she hasn't slept in the week. She invites you in, but her eyes nervously dart around the room and tell me about Michael's last shadow run. I don't know that much about it. We were hired by an unknown Mr. Johnson through Caleb to track down a location. Back now when he made the offer, so I wasn't included in the deal. 
Michael said one stop at Boris Arasco's, and he'd be sat. You know, Caleb's not our normal Johnson. We usually use a Johnson named Mortimer Reed. He sits up in the Penumbra District, a restaurant called the Big Rhino. What can you tell me about Caleb Rightmore? He's a Johnson Michael and I used a couple of times. I don't trust him, though. Who knows what those elves are up to, anyway? I might find him a Icarus Descending. That's where we always met him. How about Rasco? Of course, Rasco's a small-time fixer who works out of an abandoned greenhouse at Redmond. Anything for a buck. That's Boris. Probably the last person to sprawl to see Michael alive. And because we gotta get a little bit of extra dialogue, let's ask her whether she wants to sign on. And no way, Ace. I loved Michael, but I don't plan on joining him. Somebody powerful wanted Michael's team out of the way. I don't want a penny part of something that large. As if on cue, the door to the room explodes and we're leaving you momentarily stunned. Flash of automatic gunfire rakes Tabitha through the obscuring smoke and sends you diving for cover. The swarm of bullets baits, you leap to your feet, surging forward through the thick cloud, you catch a glimpse of a figure in red and black disappearing down the corridor. You rush back into Tabitha's room, but there's no signs of life. There's a hollow pick among her scattered belongings and pick it up. There is another picture. Great. Let's go say hi to our friend. We have multiple friends. So we'll go ahead and say hi to those multiple friends. I've walked past where our multiple friends live. Come on, Morty, don't be shy. Mortimer! What's with, Obey? What's the haps? How the hell are you doing, Mortimer? It's been forever! It's been like a year! How the fuck's it going? We don't have he does we don't have any proper questions for him though. But one day we will. Take care, Morty. So good to see you. Come on, Morty, don't be shy. Here's our other friend. Peek around the bar. Hmm? <laughs> That's actually kinda cute. <laughs> Orc? Fucking take that back. Smooth skin. An armed troll studies you with his largest pupil. You want some? Looking for some information, buddy. What's your story, Chummer? The name's Mars. Did you know he was the god of war? I see things different than most. The fastest way to solve a problem is to shove a gun in it and shoot. Problem is, I can't do this all the time. I run out of bullets too fast. So I started to think, how can I get paid to shoot at people? Then it hit me. Join Lone Star. They can shoot at anyone they like and get free reloads. So I studied real hard, but you know what? I was thrown out. So now I'm here looking for work. Questions? Tell me about the weenies. We beat them up. Way to go, XSI. <laughs> Proud of you. Halloweeners own red men. They're the sort of low-end trash I used to hang with before I got more educated. They beat on unsuspecting targets with fleeing three things can carry, but they're a lot tougher than the i fivers They're a lone star. They hate him. Don't bring up the subject again. He's fucking jealous of him. How is it that you are a troll? I didn't ask. I never asked for this. All right, Jensen. Seven feet, four inches, baby. You know, as far as troll height's considered, it's actually not that big. You're like basketball player center-sized. Anyway. I come along? You fucking bet we get to shoot people. I love shooting people. 360 million. To have a friend around to shoot people. It's great. So Winston Mars, the troll samurai. There's a lot of development potential with him. Uh, there was a time I goofed around having him as my decker. 
<laughs> that didn't last long. He likes shotguns, and he likes killing people, and as a troll, well, he's got a lot of body potential. It's good stuff, and he comes with no cyberware, which means you can build him from the ground up. Makes him great. Another samurai you can pick up in this game, even your starting character has uh, hand razors. He's uh, pristine. shotgun he has is... It works. Works. It works. That's all I can say about that. We'll, uh, we'll trade him our clips. He's gonna go through those a lot. I might as well keep him with shotgun. I think that's a scatter grenade. I think I just moused over that or looked at it. Yeah, it's a scatter grenade. We'll play for another hour, and then I'll throw up the poll to see whether folks want to switch to uh, another game. Pick up 150 new yen for helping that guy bleeding on the ground. He wasn't a vampire. Uh, viewers uh, wanted to see me dip my toes back into Shadowrun, and while I certainly can finish in one setting, and I've shown two, uh, don't know whether the current audience, it'll be around, wants to see that play to the completion. No gimmicks for this run, I'm just goofing off. I, no, I don't feel like fighting I-5ers right now. Slot off, Ragface. I have no compassion. Let's go, uh, visit the doctor here in Seattle General Hospital. Is this your holopix? Sure, the holopix and teller of Michael's death. Here, stream freely, but she manages to stifle most of the sobs, composing herself with much effort she begins to speak. Michael was a good friend. Met when he first arrived three years ago. If there's anything I can do for you, let me know. He had a best friend, Stark. They must have died together on the run. I'll talk to you later. Up here is Icarus descending. Uh... They don't, uh... much care for Joshua's kind. Say nothing of Winston. I'd like to go in. <laughs> Try back later, like next century. We'll think about it. How much money do I have on hand? That's enough. Yeah, that's enough. That's not enough to get a uh, heartbane. But uh, that is going to be enough to grab... I, no, MDB? Uh, like, uh, as far as the metahumans are concerned, uh, elves have the same uh, strength cap that humans do of six. Fight or no? All right. This is my favorite of the four bar jingles. Although I do enjoy Mortimer Reed's one. That's him. That son of a bitch. <laughs> How's it going, Phantom? You want some? Info! I'm well connected and so are my friends. No, no, no. He's not a vampire. Trent. Trent's, like, palette type is more like a vampire than what Phantom is. He just wears, like, the same... a similar out... uniform. So Phantom here is a Decker. You can tell by the fucking... typing of the dead keyboard he's wearing. Been making the name in for myself in the Matrix. Worked for a company who trained me in cyberspace. And an anti meta human group that got involved and he got fired. Wanted to do some serious damage to his high minded breeders. No offense, of course. Tell me about the Matrix, Phantom. It's fucking awesome. 
do all kinds of crazy shit there. Where the hell can I get some cyber deck equipment? Two places, really. And how is it that you're an elf? Well, it's the goblinization. Elves are dwarves. Orcs and trolls just kind of magically and spontaneously vomited out of the ether. Ta-da! As magic returned to the world. If you want to go read in history books, you can learn more, but... We're not here to do that. They didn't quite fit those in the, the Sega Genesis cartridges. Oh, a Matrix run? Of course it is, pal! I would dream of anything other than a Matrix run. Yeah, so Phantom, the elf decker, his starting weapon is garbage. Flying Duster's pretty neat. Can help to conceal illicit goods. Attributes-wise, as noted, he is the the, the mid-tier of the three Deckers, with Peter being the worst, the Dwarf Decker, who's available to wander in the Puyol of Barons. Uh, Phantom, fairly accessible here in Rimraku Ecology. Uh, and then Heartbane, uh, she's the hardest one to get. Uh, it'd be quadruple digits to hire her for just one run. Phantom also has some wiggle room for customization on top of that. Stat-wise, he's... he needs some work. Yeah, th these aren't riggers. Deckers. It's different. Come on. You can only do so much here. Except where he's got, uh, hand raisers, which... Sure. And, uh, one hit of wire reflexes. But yeah, some wiggle room for customization there. Uh, the most dangerous thing about trying to get after Phantom is that uh, occasionally fights uh, erupt in the frag grenade and you get sucked into it. Uh, the Wanderer where Peter is is just as bad about those. Um, matchstick, you just have to pay it 150 new yen to get um, a recharge. While I'm thinking about it, let's go visit that rat face son of a bitch, and I'm not talking about uh, Ricky. And people taking my photo. What the space needle? That's him. Information, questions, contacts, thanks, goodbye. Good luck in your struggles, indeed. Have a nice life. For you, bang, bang. How's the team looking? Looking pretty solid, looking pretty good. We're gonna go kick some ass now. We're gonna beat up on some weenies. We're gonna roast some weenies, everyone. Cause we're not we're not doing a matrix run. Oh no. We're dragging all these kids through uh some shitty runs. <laughs> now if you're unfamiliar with this game, you might naturally wonder. Grimoth, you paid a lot of money to hire both Winston and Phantom for a job you have fully proven to be capable of doing just by yourself. Why would you do that? That doesn't make any fucking sense. Well, a quirk with this game, he says he goes to the wrong fucking location, is, uh, that any run that doesn't take you back to the Mr. Johnson doesn't count for dismissing runners. Uh, the delivery runs, uh, which have you deliver a package to point A or point B, or a courier from point A to point B, don't take you back to Mr. Johnson. I also walk straight into that fucking punch. Damn it, despite upgrading my body and my fucking armor, that happened. Which means, 
that the game doesn't remove them from the party. On the one hand, you're just doing a bunch of shitty runs, so it's not like Christmas is fucking saved. On the other hand, you get to keep them. I don't know. Now, we could accept more dangerous courier jobs uh, from, uh, like, the mid-tier Johnsons. Uh, but they also have, like, other job types in, like, their pool of jobs. And those jobs typically involve travel over longer distances, of which uh, would eat into your financial resources. Unless you get the Orc Armband, which allows you to get cab fares for free. That's right. They are collecting one karma per... Shitty run completion. I'm trying to remember all the quirky runs I've done a shadow run that we've uh, broadcasted. There was the uh, the no matrix run. There was the matrix focused run. There was the solo run that I did. Um, there's a few where I did, like, save editing sorts of things. Not save editing, but, like, hex editing. Those are pretty entertaining. I haven't transferred all of them over to YouTube. Like, some of the stuff I did last year. Like, last December. Lethal punched people. Tell, uh, he ran into that melee bug. We didn't, uh, have the game genie code, or we didn't employ it to patch out that bug. So that he wouldn't have that issue. It was deeply disheartening for him whenever uh, we encountered it. Can't remember every every single kooky thing I've done. The No Matrix run ended up being the hardest from a sheer like amount of effort needed to be expended of, like, once I had enough money, we didn't have a problem, but it was getting enough money that was the problem. Uh, I made use out of the, uh, the crime mall, uh, in that run. I've shown this off a few times in my runs, where, uh, I could buy things for cheaper than what I'd sell them back as, thanks to the help of a powerful mafia know. contact. We don't talk about that video crazy. <laughs> Never again. Never again. So you get karma mostly through completing uh, shadow runs, but just, you know, random job generation. You know, it's no wonder I like this game in Daggerfall, right? <laughs> Um, you'll also get karma through completion of main quest objectives, as you work to discover your brother's killer and bring justice upon them, whoever they may be. And, uh, every two dozen or so, uh, kills will get you a point of karma. It's not like, uh, the Super Nintendo version of Shadowrun, which basically just has you grinding constantly in the graveyard... You know, like, the various offices where hitmen are waiting. I'm interested in not being interested. No, that's not how the system works. Well, it makes him feel good, though the ending of this game is certainly lackluster, kind of, like, misses the mark. It, like, your goal ends up transitioning partway through, which, I guess, given the context of what the hell you're facing by the end, is understandable, but it just loses the thread. Shut him up. Shut him up. Meaningful challenge, right? Had to have been able to learn and grow from it. I 
And so she ended up being, uh... I lost my train of thought of what I was gonna say, so I guess it didn't fucking matter. Oh, I was, uh... And the, of the four options I offered for, uh, folks to, uh, watch to start the broadcast off with, I was, uh... Bemused to see Shadowrun win it, if only because I was like... A real-time investment before we uh, get to some fun, crunchy shit, but they probably just wanted to hear me scream and curse at fucking cyberspace. Which is going to happen. <laughs> we'll, we'll have at least one cyberspace temper tantrum before I throw the poll up again. <laughs> Aerobiz is a quick game. You know, you're working towards something there. I, I guess. <laughs> I'm not sure we're working towards something here. You want PDF airplanes instead of actual airplanes. I see. I had not considered that. Soft locking ourselves earlier was pretty entertaining, though. Along with our super speed hacks. I miss those. I really do. I just know I can't play with them. I'm too good. I'm too good. So the pay I'm being offered is of little consequence for me to do these runs. It's uh, the karma we make along the way. And I'm here in tutorial baby area of the Redmond Barons. Uh, as dangerous as it may actually be in Shadowrun lore. Because, well, all the runs that we do here are centered and located here. Doing all right? No freezing rain? To my knowledge. This group is so overkill for this tutorial area. I almost feel bad. How you doing on Karma Phantom? Uh... I would like to get his computer skill up to... At least six, maybe seven, before I take him into cyberspace. Alternatively, I can increase quickness. So we're going to be doing a few more runs. When I say a few more runs, I mean... I mean more than a few. Do 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 Trying to think back to of the times I've cleared Shadowrun in one setting. I can't remember what my swiftest time I was. What you're trying to do. It won't work. Sleepy Coffee invoking the wrath of Bob Page there. Derailed my thought. Was it important? <laughs> Bob Page sees you, though. He's not fool. Not tricked. Always watching. Always clever and crafty. Nope. Friends. <laughs> Winston just wheels around the corner. <laughs> what a fucking dick. Phantom's just like, pew, pew, pew. Winston's like, mm. That fucking Security 500 light there still is so shitty. It really is. Um... I... Don't... No, MDB. That makes sense, Lord Castellian. Makes sense. 
you'll want to say, right? We're close to making back the amount of money I spent to hire these... ...these folks. The real money, though, is in the Matrix. Like, I've talked about this before in my various, uh... ...playthroughs and broadcasts I've done this, but the Matrix is... ...like... It's like fucking Caravan, or whatever. Like, it's just like this off-to-the-side, like, fucking, like, mini-game area that you don't have to engage in at all. There's a wealth of wonderful, like, story flavor details in there if you want to faff about in it, but it's just like a fucking hobby. You don't have to do anything in there at all, as I prove. You could be lost on some story details. But if you already know the story... I don't need the Matrix at all. It's just a fucking, like, rich man's hobby. And you can make a lot of money in the Matrix. But the Matrix shit costs so much money. Like, cyberware doesn't have anything on how much fucking Matrix shit costs. Magic? Depends on how much of a completionist you want to be. <laughs> Have I played the new Shadow Run? Um, I haven't played the newest like Hong Kong one. I do actually have that on Steam. I got it for free due to like some sort of offer thing last year. I think it was like it was being given away for free. Yeah, I have it on my list. Um, I played Shadow Run Returns, uh, Insect Spirits, and I did a bit of Dragonfall. I think that was the one after Shadowrun Returns, and it just didn't resonate with me. I didn't go through all the way. Hong Kong, uh, I know, is the best of the lot, from what I've been told. I just haven't gotten around to it. Haven't felt compelled to do so. How long would it take to fully deck out a guy for the Matrix without using the Matrix? Something like I can't count that high. So, like, your most profitable jobs would be doing corp runs. Which in itself, uh, will begin to invest your time and resources. Yeah, it'd be corp runs. Which if you did it against friend Rocco, which is what Caleb Brightmore offers, like base is like what, five, six thousand for that? take a long time. The quickest way would be to just uh, join up with the Mafia and uh, sell that sweet, delicious armor for uh, more than what it costs. But you'd still be there for a while. And you'd enjoy the sweet, soothing sounds of fucking inventory management in this fucking game. Mega Corpse, uh, so, you're a Shadowrunner, you, uh, operate in the cracks of a uh, system. You're like a, a lubricant uh, to keep all this shit together. Uh, the most powerful entities uh, in this game from a metahuman aspect, really on an everywhere aspect, are the mega corporations. yeah. Uh, they control just about everything. And, uh, their power squabbles end up being, you know, among themselves, and then also with, you know, like, like, 
intra, like, inside an individual corporation, the struggles, and then, like, between, like, other mega corporations. Shadowrunners end up, like, lubricating that process and being, like, the agents that are used to attack, like, corporations and those subsidiary of corporations and what have you. So yeah, over the course of Shadowrun lore, uh, mega corporations uh, ended up rising to become more powerful than the governments themselves. Like uh, corporations have that extra territoriality where like they have sovereign rights on their own land. <laughs> Of course, there are some um, non-mega corporations that uh, certainly do possess quite a bit of power, as the uh, ravaged UCAS, the United Canadian and American States, can attest to. When all of those native, when all those Native American shamans uh, actually had some fucking magic at their disposal, and they high dukened fucking <laughs> all of North America for their crimes. This isn't going fast enough. I might just settle. Yeah, I'm gonna settle. I'm gonna take my own advice from the populace playthrough I've got ongoing and just fucking settle. No sprog and settle. Uh yeah. Fine. It'll be fine. Cartridge save. Do 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 Give me a room. What are you buying? What are you selling? Give me negotiation four and intelligence five and charisma three. Winston, we need some more quickness in you so that you uh, actually attack quicker. I think your cap is a five. I don't want to put it on the cap. It might only be a four, though. Let's test this out here. Okay, it is a five. Don't you tell me you can't load. <laughs> hmm. Oh, I see what I did. <laughs> I'm used to using a different emulator. <laughs> Press the wrong button. Yeah, I'm not used to using that. Well, I'll have to load the card save. Son of a bitch. <sighs> Hard reset. I've already done several uh, hard resets and loading from cartridges. <laughs> Including one time where I soft-locked myself, so... Don't get excited. We'll just do this. Great. Oh, son of a bitch. This time we have a fight. Yep, that time we had a fight. Moving on. There's a sprite limit to the amount of enemies we can have on screen, damn it. Too many dead bodies. Too many babies. Anyway. Actually, I ended up getting an extra point of karma. I don't have to increase charisma this time. I can increase body. <laughs> and I will. You. Let me see whether intelligence is limited to four or five. I forget these things. It's four for you. Okay. 
Well, I'm fine with that there. It's not like I can have fucking cyberware that would increase that. That's cool. So we'll up this to four. And then I know you can have one more quickness beyond this, because your cap is five. I know, right? Typical. Phantom. That, and that's all I can get for you, really. Okay. Great. Someone else wanted to join my garden, in which I grew my fucks. Well, there ain't no Bioware in this game. Um... It... It's only the person that you have control. Like, if you are in, like, an encounter of some kind, where that would be charisma-dependent, it would be the person you have controlled. Go ahead and sell these. I could have transferred them over to someone else, but damn, just sell them. doing on clips these days, Winston? You got... I mean, I gave you my starting 10, so you have... Yeah, you're good. And then Phantom, it doesn't fucking matter, really. With your fucking shitty starting gun. Okay. I hate what's about to happen so much. <laughs> kind of stalling in here before I go to hell. So Shadowrun of the Sega Genesis is my favored iteration of the various Shadowrun games. I do like it. I dig the story of it. I dig the uh, random job generation, effectively. Uh, I got memories of this uh, as a kid. So there's a nostalgia factor cooking in, but I think the game holds up. Uh, the music... Pretty enjoyable for it. I think the Genesis sound chip uh, really fits it well. Uh, the, Su the Super Nintendo version is definitely inferior. Uh, it plays more like a, an older school like adventure game with like your keywords. A lot of bullshit in that game too. Like that game explores like some fucking weirdness and Jake Armitage's like personal hell that he's going through. Fucking Cortex Bomb, fucking Dog Champ, you know, Dog Spirit, fucking Dragon, of course, after him, fucking can't remember shit. Ah, uh, right, I can just walk. Shadowrun the video game versus Shadowrun the, uh, role-playing group experience? Um, Shadow the Shadowrun games would be... The only example I could think of where I would rather play a video game for it than a group role-playing game. Uh, Shadowrun lore is very enjoyable. Uh, but the various mechanics employed uh, throughout Shadowrun's editions... ...do make enjoyment harder. Uh, 
in almost every case, I'm all for, like, the group role-playing experience, like, getting together to, like, tell a story. But, um, in the case of Shadowrun, I'm like, we can just have that video game form. That's perfectly fine by me. Hey, uh, that said, um, it was last year, uh, ended up uh, having a uh, Shadowrun 4th Edition campaign that Argate Lamb Puppe, that Austin ran as a GM, that uh, we did effectively do a full campaign of. It was pretty enjoyable overall. And <laughs> some, some highlights. All right, Morty knew what I wanted. This system's probably gonna be a bitch. It's probably gonna be the only fucking easy Matrix run that has the fucking tar bit, and I'm gonna be like, son of a bitch. Hi. Thanks, Lone Star. I haven't, uh... Like, the, the, the latest, like, Shadowrun I know any details of is, uh, 5th edition, and I only know, like, bits and pieces of that. I don't really have an experience playing it. Maybe this is the simple matrix room of the orange data store in the top right corner. That's a financial. Son of a bitch, Marmory! <laughs> Fucking hates you! <laughs> Alright, let's show it off. Let's show off why I'm pissed. Fucking save it. Because all I'm doing is going to that fucking data store up there in an actual reality and then aborting this run. Well, let's fucking go, Morty! Fucking son of a bitch. <laughs> I fucking hate being right. <laughs> Fuck. <sighs> Fuck you, Mortimer. <laughs> okay. So, for everyone who has no idea what the fuck is going on, this is cyberspace. We're in the Matrix. Uh, working to complete a simple Matrix run. That was our job. Uh, the text was something about, like, embezzlement and going, like, financial data and taking care of something to cover up for a client's tracks. la di da So, there's different types of nodes, and you go to fight the intrusion countermeasures, the ice at these nodes, you know, to... Uh, disable them by one means or another. Uh, there's uh, three tiers of job, matrix job, that the, uh, the Johnsons will offer you. A simple one, a moderate one, and then a red flagged one. Um, but even in like these run systems, there are some that are harder than others. Uh, this simple matrix run system we're in, for example, is a mean one, because one of the intrusion countermeasures it has is called a tar pit. What a tar pit does, um, if a program that you use, and these are our programs in our cyber deck, fails against that node, against the ice defending that node, a tar pit permanently rips that program out of your cyber deck. It's gone forever, you have to repurchase it. And it sets the alert of the system to active. So, say for example, like, you may have lost your attack program to the tar pit, and then you actually may have no means of defeating that node, so you have to leave. Or, the alert is made the node so hard to defeat that you have to leave anyway. 
Which is why, fuck you, Mortimer Reed. That's why that'll happen. We're going to commit some violence now with our attack program. That's a barrier. It can't be deceived anyway. It's sending pings in an attempt to raise the system alert. There's currently no alert. I have my Force Lightning. I have a sweet star I can throw, and then I have, like, a little thimble. They're different, like, attack ratings. Oh, hey, our financial data actually is back here. So I was right about the tar pit, but wrong about the location of the financial data. We did the wrong! Ah! Fuck you, Mortimer <laughs> You son of a bitch! <laughs> uh, so now, anyway, now we're here in pay dirt land, uh, potentially, which is uh, harvesting uh, data from a data store. Uh, had I had the CPU node defeated, I could go there and disable the alert status, but I don't. I don't feel like trying it, so... We're just going to be here until the system kicks us out. Like so. Job's done, though. Uh, Winston and uh, Phantom will be leaving us. Work complete, baby. But what do you mean, wait, did they fix the attacks? I heard from a speedrunner, they're all the same. <laughs> what do you mean, fix the attacks? <laughs> <laughs> As for them being the same? No, they're not. That's, uh, that's grim tested and grim approved there. Fucking speedrunners. Anyway, let's go, Winston. Wanna come back? Come along. Uh, there, there is no. Jack Roth, I'm not sure how bad you're fucking with me right now. An older, buggier version of a Sega Genesis game. <laughs> uh, they absolutely do have different di hit rates and do deal different damage. It's either that or I just have confirmation biases built up over two decades of playing this. I would be willing to believe I, I did not mean to enter here. No, I'm not interested in your frag grenades. I understand what you mean, though, in the form of, like, a, um... Like, a game that would be, like, in Japanese and then ported. Or playing, like, a, a PAL version instead of, like, an NTSC or whatever version. I understand now. Howdy. Ah, come along. It's cheaper to hire them. We had, like, we're building up some nice rapport with these kids. I did not go to sell my data. I wanted to have the team with me first. The squad, once again. Autobots, roll out. A lot of frag face. Being of karmic retribution, there may end up being some of that in the game where a lack of compassion translates into getting dunked on by some sort of horrible thing, but if it exists, it's so insignificant as to be, well, Insignificant. Nice. 
1,800 from that file. That's 2,300 uh, total from those three files that we stole um, that were all bonus gravy and not related to the job at all. That's an example of how lucrative the Matrix can be for you. Good stuff. That was just from a green data store. That wasn't a, uh, that wasn't an orange one. It certainly was not a red one. Financial data uh, typically pays pretty well, though. It's not like confidential data, but pretty good. Hellhounds are the worst. Hellhounds are just like, they're like glass cannons, but they're like glass cannons that fucking move at like Mach 2. <laughs> like, what if the cannon didn't shoot like a projectile at you, but it launched itself at you? That's what a hellhound is. Fucking Mortimer Reed. Uh-huh. Oh, I'm sure. Oh, I'm fucking sure, Morty. Yeah, it's gonna be a simple Matrix run. We'll fucking see. Dead simple. We're going to security? Yeah. Okay, good. We haven't been to... It's not the same system. Good. Uh, sand system access nodes... Uh, occasionally have barriers protecting them, which you cannot deceive, but you can sleaze. Uh, sleaze allows you to bypass a node without defeating it. Deception defeats it. They're basically pretending like you have access. Okay, the barriers, it says, fuck your deception. I know better. We're gonna throw down. So we will throw down. Ah! Yeah! Thor! Yeah! Jazz hands. Of course, I do enjoy my Force Lightning the most, but uh, now and then I gotta press the B or C keys to... liven it up. There's an orange one to start us off. I'm thinking about all, like, the simple Matrix systems I know. <laughs> it's no wonder I have such a hard time remembering things, you know, some days. It's no wonder I have, like, a problem with, like, memory comprehension, because I have all this fucking useless shit in my head, like, the layout and, like, <laughs> consistency of fucking simple Matrix runs in Shadowrun for the Sega Genesis. Like, when I was younger, I didn't have all this shit in my head already. So I had an easier time thinking of it. Ah. Uh. Are you a trace and dump, a trace and burn? Like an access whip behind like that? You might not even be like an access. You might just have that straight up. All right, we could definitely use a deception upgrade. Dead projects or system files. Maybe outdated. All right, Griffith, it's not really fucking calling your shot if you just name like three fucking things. <laughs> but you did say dead projects first, so we're gonna take that victory. <laughs> oh, I don't think we're gonna be able to complete this system successfully with what we got. I think that's asking for a bit much. Let's go here. These, these IO ports typically lead to nowhere, but I think... That's how this system diverges. Can't always be right. 
rejected. We'd certainly use some wired reflexes for the deck. The slow attack rate is uh, a real crime. No, this is certainly one of the harder simple ones. Could be another orange. Or that fucking, like, green seven. CPU's gonna be an orange as well. Uh, I don't think we're getting past that. I'm not sure we'll be able to get past this. This might be the, uh, the barrier with, like, a trace and dump or trace and burn behind it that I thought the last SPU was. At least the packets aren't doing a great job of... That's an outright failure there. Failed to properly execute the program. It's not even an alert. Darn! Simple thing. Damn it. <laughs> Our damage sucks too. Really, the, the biggest reason why I'm still here shooting at this thing is I'm just fucking amazed that <laughs> the alert hasn't progressed. <laughs> Orange five? Orange four. Well, that's the research SPU. That might be the research data store. We might be able to finagle this. All right, a no alert blaster. At least there's no alert. I think the killers are the more dangerous of uh, the two that deal damage to the persona. So we can probably do this. Seems easier to hit than the uh, the SPU was. That's nice. And if this is in fact an orange data store, I would enjoy you know the opportunity to make several thousand new yen. Provided that uh, we succeed in our procs for finding valuable data. This is the Matrix. Come on. Cyberspace. Work with me here. No, it's Project Files Data Store, so... This actually is not awful. Because I can harvest from an orange data store without successfully completing the run which means I can have not the easiest access to keep getting back here, but it's a guaranteed orange data store I know I can get to. It's gonna be good. <laughs> AOL is still a thing. True. Five grand. Ah, five grand. Ah, beautiful. What did I do? All I've done with this deck is buy some extra storage, and then like a shitty sleaze and a shitty stop program I've never bothered to use. I hired Phantom, 
and gave him one extra point in computers. This is... This is a good day. Oh, <laughs> this is a good day. It's good stuff. I think we'll go in one more time and then I'll uh, kick the pole up. Just wanna, just, just wanna rub this gravy all over my body again. Probably could have upgraded something before I came back in here. I know what you're trying to do. It won't work. Nick, tier three. My God. <laughs> You'll have access to the smug face. Oh no! <laughs> and the little adorable grim high five. Son of a bitch! <laughs> Bob Page sees your move. This is a trace and dump. My God! No! <laughs> My face! <laughs> It was buried behind tier three so that no one would be able to use that smug face. <laughs> this is a barrier killer. Okay. Neat. Here comes our train friend. To join us in this particular SPU of pain and suffering. Yeah, really could have stood to upgrade the attack program. Wouldn't have been able to fit on my, uh... Would have had trouble fitting it onto the, uh... The combat slots, though. Is train still OP or is playing over... Um... It? Don't understand that question, Tagarov. And that's the adorable wave. In all honesty, that should be a uh, tier 1 instead of a tier 2 thing, but uh, when I was initially assigning Twitch emotes, I wanted to have the three ones I enjoyed the most on there, and just so having that put up in tier 2, and I'd have to go through, like, the approval process to get the resort and rejigger things. That's effort, man. I don't broadcast enough to put forth that kind of effort. Okay, Fucking train. Yeah, if that SPU that had like the barrier had been any more competent or capable, like my gravy train would be derailed, effectively. Because that shit would upgrade to a passive alert. If not an active alert, just... No fun for me. <laughs> gold! It makes the world go round! Gold! It makes the world go round. Ah, uh, think uh, think I'm just gonna continue to keep this system in perpetuity. <laughs> Never complete this fucking run. <laughs> we'll be able to do it faster and faster and faster. Ah. Oh. Okay. Let's check out the shop before I uh, kick up the viewer poll. 
It'll get boring to watch. What? <laughs> it won't get boring to play. <laughs> Not a problem. Just rub money all over my body, shake my nipples at the screen. Yes, Nguyen! That... <laughs> <laughs> that timing really got me, excuse me. <laughs> English Spring was six dollars and seventy nine cents. That was that was well time. You should shower of cold coins. Appreciated. How much is that? That's 23 grand. See, there's no point in upgrading to the Cyber Shack. Uh, it's just not much better than the Allegiance Alpha. But, like, the Fuchi Cyber 5 uh, can be, like, really powerful. And, like, hold, well, not really powerful, but can, like, hold you intact uh, through, like, the moderate Matrix runs until you get, like, the Fairlight. The Sega, I mean, you could as well, but there's just, like, a significant, like, price jump in those. And, uh, thanks to my negotiation, we are just 10 grand away from that Fuji Cyber 5. Pretty nice. No point in getting a deck response. But what I would probably do is, uh... Get at least one more level of attack. That way we could speed up the process. Of harvesting. Another hit of deception wouldn't be bad, but I'd have to go all the way to Puyallup Barons. Also isn't that much of a price difference, but hey, every little bit helps. Come on, the game's not even labeled as Daggerfall. <laughs> I figured that would be true. That's why I didn't immediately walk away from the Dissar. Gotta buy some RAM. That'll be enough to load the attack program, at least. Oh, hey, and that'll just fit Deception, too. That's still enough room to fit five files, provided that they all aren't 50 and 60 megapixels. Cool. All right. Let's fur up the pole now. Then listen to these sweet jamming tunes in the background. We transition to... Festive. 